Good morning everyone, time for another member update. Actually just did a 30 minute video and it was on the wrong screen so I didn't record anything. So I'm doing it again. Um, decided to do a good morning video which basically is me getting up in the morning. Why am I getting up so late? Because I was up all night watching the stupid markets. Um, so I was just going to go through what I do in the morning and Hopefully it's informative, it might be boring, but uh, if it is, turn it off. So let's start with Bitcoin. Oh my goodness, what a ride. Uh, I don't think any of my overnight fills got filled because I was way below the market. Uh, some crazy stuff that's happened with Bitcoin. Um, now this print here on Bifinex, you can see the high print, 17171. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me say, uh, so all you guys who aren't traders, who are just hodlers, <laughs> you guys got to be rich. I mean, this is unbelievable. So what happened? Well, Bitcoin, uh, I only have time to follow the news on it. Let's check Coinbase. This, this price tick at Coinbase was absolutely nothing shy of phenomenal. Let's see if we can find it on here. It was a print of 18,000. Oh, they've removed it. That's very interesting. Let's see if it comes in. No, they've removed it. I've made money off of Coinbase. They have misquotes. That's going to be a whole other show. But there was a print here of 18,464. I remember I memorized the number. Let's see if it still shows because there was a higher print over here on Bitcoin Wisdom. So there is a Coinbase chart on here and it's still there, 19340. So, wow, do I trust Coinbase? <laughs> no way. I would not leave a penny on Coinbase. Uh, there's some shady stuff going on there. I don't even know, but that 18464 is gone. Um, but here, apparently the price actually spiked to 19340. Now, I think these guys have an API with them, so I would say this is good historical information as opposed to what Coinbase has revised historical information. So yeah, at some point the Bitcoin price actually hit 19,340 on one of the, one of the exchanges. Um, what did it hit over here? The high in USDT. For Bitcoin over on Poloniex came in at 16865. Big difference. That's what you get in wild markets. So where are we going? Well, just off the top of my head, looking at this chart, it's still bullish. I mean, yeah, it's putting kind of a top, but the top is kind of resuming its uptrend. That's looking tight. This that's 50-50. So, can't say. Um, what's the first thing I check? The first thing I'm going to check is to see if I got filled in the overnight. So, I go to USDT, I go to Bitcoin, I'm already here. And I have my scaled buys below the market. You can see I had a buy at 13.5, 13,000. Did I have a buy at 14,000 and did it get hits? I don't remember. So, it looks like my last buy, I checked my trades. My last buy on Bitcoin was 14901 on 0.05. I think there was a coin I wanted to buy. So I was in USDT, didn't have any Bitcoin, so I bought 0.05 and then bought something else. So no, none of my overnight uh, overnights got filled. And they get filled more frequently than you would believe. Like something like this, if that happened at night, you know, it closed at 11,000 and you woke up at 8,700. I think I manually bought that one. This one could have been filled. Um, but tonight, no, nothing got filled. So that's the first thing I check. Did my overnights get filled? And they didn't. Next thing I'm going to check is my balance, my coins. Now this 16675, uh, that's lower because I've transferred money, also over to, more money over to this uh, Binance to accumulate this iota which appears to be taking quite a hit right now. Now I actually lightened up on iota 
and got into USDT. Uh, I sold about half my position, I think. Uh, looking at the chart, I still like the chart. Chart looks good. Um, like I said, I bought in, I, bought, I think I bought in around here, 25 to 30. I sold out at 47. I absolutely top ticked that sucker. Uh, I don't want to sound uh, narcissistic, but I think, <laughs> I think I might have got the, the top price. And what I did was the next day I came back in, I doubled. I bought back in almost at the same price. I, it's easier for me to trade a market that I have a fundamental reason to trade. It just makes it easier. This is going to be a, a really easy market to trade. It doesn't mean I'm right, but that's my view at this point. Uh, I believe that it's going to take out this 47. I believe it's going back up there. I believe that IOTA is going to be under accumulation for quite some time. Makes it very easy to trade. Nevertheless, I hedged overnight. Now, hedging over here on Binance is a little bit different. We're going to come back to that. Um, so, but I would be checking that. But uh, I have to check my trades over at Poloniex. So, basic principle that uh, you want to follow. And uh, I said in the, before, the video got lost, so I'll say it again. <laughs> Obviously, you guys can't hear it. But I said it before on many other videos. There's two principles that are extremely important that you want to follow. One, buy winners. Buy something that's going up. And add to your winners, cut your losers. And then the third thing, keep your bets small. Keep small bets. There's a lot of reasons for those principles. You have to follow those rules. If you don't follow those rules, you're going to get your head handed to you. Now, I'm not talking about fundamental trading. I'm not talking about accumulating a coin you like. I'm not talking about, you know, just buying Bitcoin in general. I'm talking about trading. Specifically, and this applies to any market, but it, it's absolutely applicable to these, these cryptocurrency markets. As far as I can tell, these are real markets. Now, the exchanges... There's some shady exchanges out there, and I, sometimes I'm not sure who, who's on the other side of the trade. But as far as the overall market, cryptocurrency market, this is a free market, and it's trading like one. That makes it extremely easy to trade. But you have to follow the rules. Again, the rules. Keep your bets small. Buy winners. Add to the winners. Cut the losers. So with those in mind, you can see I have a 0.04 Bitcoin balance. Not too concerned about that. It's not very big. You can see the bulk of my account is in USDT. That's really the only way I can sleep overnight. Open orders, you can see I got 65.30. Those are my overnight Bitcoin buys. So I don't have any open orders. Let's double check. Just check open orders. They're all BTC overnight emergency buy type buys. Next thing I'm going to do, uh, obviously I'll assess my capital. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to go through the numbers here, but some money was sent over to the other exchange. I'm roughly up about, I think I'm up about three grand in the last few days. So we need to review the positions. So keeping the rules in mind, we're going to add to our winners. We're going to cut our losers. Uh, first up is next. I'm going to check these coins first because these are ones I own. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I got in. That's a bull market. That's the kind of thing I like to see. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Almost textbook pennant. And I think in my other video, I already added to this position, so I'm not gonna add to it. Um, but I covered how to buy buy on the bid uh, pretty tight 46.99 by 47.10 halfway decent spread you could actually buy that ask i think this one's breaking out through that pen now this is one in particular that you want to watch because this thing has everything going for it this has all the signs of a winner what are those signs rising pennants how many do we have? We have a pennant breakout right here. Uh, we have a huge rally on heavy volume. 
beautiful textbook. We have a pullback. My favorite place to get in, a pullback on a breakout. Where did the pullback go? About 50%. What did it do? It formed up another pendant. It broke out on heavy volume. What did it do? This time, corrected back to the pennant. Another place to add if you believe it's going higher. Why do you believe it's going higher? This is, again, it's purely technical trading. You don't know it's going higher. This might have shooken a lot of people out right here. A correction below the breakout point. Normally, you know, they won't pull back. But if you held on, it looks like you can see pennant reformed. Breakout on massive volume. And then, huge price rise, another pennant forming, and now, guess what? We've got another pennant. It's forming up right as we speak. A couple things to watch on these. Watch and see if you have a bit uh, an ask stack. Um, what is an ask stack? It's a stack of money that's sitting on the ask that's blocking the market from rising. Usually it's someone who's out of the market. It's a whale. There's really no whales here. If you're talking about two Bitcoins, there's not much going on. I'm surprised that Next doesn't have more volume than that, but it doesn't. Um, so where's our whale? I don't know, maybe 4,700? Let's look at the price to see if we have a, a wall we're butting up against. Somewhere in the 47s. Like I said, I've already added to this. I'm going to keep a really close eye on this. Uh, this could break out on heavy volume out of this last fourth pennant. What's the other uh, principle? The, this, this is a principle uh, that goes against human nature so much that it is uh, virtually impossible for most people to trade. And we're talking about 95 to 99 percent of people won't be able to successfully trade because they can't deal with this principle. And that principle is that the best time to buy something is when it's at new highs. When it's its most expensive, that's the time you want to buy it. Why? Because there's nobody above you at a loss. There is nobody right now barring these little prices here. Okay, we're, we're ignoring, you know, we're not in the massive buying phase right now. So we're ignoring the little stuff. But barring this little stuff right here, everyone who owns this coin, next, you know, there's people that have wallets. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink. There's people that have wallets. There's people that have loads of it on the exchanges. There's people that have, you know, paper wallets. There's people that have it that have forgot about it. That most people know about it. Every single one of those people is winning. No one's losing. No one's waiting up above us, pissed off because they bought into the spike high. They're mad. They're at a loss. They bought too late. They got stuck carrying a corpse, whatever you want terminology you want to use. They're mad because they're stuck. We don't have them. They're not here. That's the most bullish scenario you can have. Everyone's a winner. What stops the price from rising farther? Greed. So it's not hope. Okay, okay because as... Uh, and I was going to point out this before. I don't remember if I pointed this out before. The textbook Bibles on trading, technical trading, also fundamental trading, even textbook Bibles are going to be Market Wizards, 1987. Read that book. How many times have I read that book? 20 to 30 times, maybe? I don't know. Maybe that's an exaggeration. I honestly don't know. Jesse Livermore, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. How many times have I read that book? 30 to 50. Probably no exaggeration. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Those are the Bibles of trading. Read those books. Read them again. Read them again. Read both of those books at least 10 times. I'm not kidding you. Those are the Bibles of trading. You have to learn those principles to the point where those principles become you. Where things like this, they just you look at this and you just go, wow, I'm watching this. 
is multiple pennants building up. And we're getting a little sell off here. Sometimes when you get a big spike low like that on a pennant that's building, you jump in and buy uh, a small amount. Remember, principle, keep all bets small. So that is next. We're definitely watching next very, very carefully for a breakout. Steam dollars. And by the way, you can see that my position, hold on, let me get, uh, so my other screen, which you can't see, I'm still working, I'm getting that working, is uh, Twitch. So I usually have Twitch. I like to watch uh, this play uh, PUBG Battlegrounds. Um, love the game. It's great to watch. And uh, but with the noise here, I am going to get a new PC. I can't stand this noise. don't like it feeding back in my video. So I'm probably just going to get a streaming box. So I may start streaming because uh, now on Twitch they have IRL in real life category. A lot of people uh, streaming on that. I may stream on that uh, so I can get uh, members on in the chat and maybe some Skype calls, etc. That would be great. So we get that muted. But uh, keep that Twitch running. Something to do when things are slow. Things don't appear to be slow. Next position, Steam Dollars. Like I said, I went back there. Bet small, extremely tiny bets. Now I've already I reviewed these on the other video, so I've probably already acted. Would I act on this? Uh, not yet. This is a big not yet. I'm. The chart tells me to hold. It doesn't tell me to sell. But it doesn't tell me to buy. So I'm happy with that. We'll keep Steam Dollars just the way it is. Remember, we're cutting losers. We're keeping or adding to winners. Stellar. One of my favorite coins to trade. Because Stellar is an absolute textbook example of pennants. So is Next. So this one had a big shakeout. I actually traded this shakeout a couple of times and then went to bed on a tiny position, I think. Or maybe I picked it up just a few minutes ago. Anyway, I like to trade Stellar. According to the chart, mm -mm, not going to add. That's adding to a loser. Short term, it's losing. Now, do I consider this a pullback before a breakout on a pennant? Yeah, this could be. Um, but with Stellar, especially with this recent move and it being sick, I'm not adding right here. All I'm watching. Next coin that I have. Again, I have a tiny amount, 0.0094 of Stellar. Nothing. It could get cut in half. It would have virtually no impact. Looks like I have a tiny position in Ripple. So, why did I buy Ripple? Because Ripple actually perked up. Do I like this chart? No. This is typical catch a falling knife. Catch a falling knife is something you don't do. Um, it can be a great gamble. It can be a fantastic gamble. You can see that Ripple has gone from a high of 24,351 to a recent low. We're not going to go to this low, but we'll go to a recent low of 11,71. Wow. So we've had a 90 something, 95 to 99% bear market in Stellar. But what I know about Stellar fundamentally, uh, fundamentally it's flawed. So it's not a buy and hold in any sense, it's strictly a trade. We'll keep an eye on this. This may be some kind of change in the trend. We can make some short term money. Definitely not a long term hold. Uh, so that's the first thing you do. Check your overnights. Did you get filled? Next thing you do, check your um, portfolio. Do you want to add? Do you want to sell your losers? Once you've done that, you're looking for new opportunities because there are always new opportunities. So we want to go over to the exchange. Uh, right now we have 0.04 Bitcoin. So we have some working capital in Bitcoin. We have USDT. So we're going to go through the Bitcoin markets first. First thing I do, 
What are our percentage returns? Steam dollars. We already looked at that. Um, decided not to add NEM. What's going on with NEM? It's up 46%. Do I like the chart? Mm, it's a falling knife bounce. Like I said, proceed with caution. You can make some quick money. You can also get pump and dumped. And if you're not careful and you don't follow the rules, you can end up with a corpse. That's a term that Jesse Livermore coined. You can end up carrying a corpse. What does that mean? When you're carrying a corpse, it means that your capital is tied up in a loser or a get evener. You didn't take your loss. The coin went down. You might have traded wrong and added to the position on the way down. Guess what? Your position got bigger. Now you're more committed. It went down some more. What did you do? You bought more. Now you're more committed. Eventually, you start carrying a corpse. You're so committed, it's gone down for so long, you've accumulated so much. Remember, this is not a fundamental play. You're not, you, you don't have any knowledge that this is going up. You don't even have any belief that this is going up based on something, some vague notion of strictly technical trading. You've accumulated this coin technically, and I, as I pointed out, you made a mistake because you didn't do it right, because you bought a falling market. But for whatever reason, you got in there and you increased your position as the price was falling and you got to the point now where you're carrying a corpse. What does that do? Well, carrying a corpse ties up your capital. Not only are you subject to future losses as this thing continues to tank, but you miss all the other opportunities. So that's an extreme danger. I can't emphasize enough how dangerous it is to avoid carrying a corpse. You know, this is just looking so interesting. I almost want to buy this. But you know what? Mm, the volume is high, too. But I've missed most of the move. I really have missed most of this move. I think I'm going to take a pass on this one. I just can't. I can't play it. So that's Zen. XEM. Litecoin. 33% move. Wow. Something's happening in Litecoin. Uh, am I going to trade? Same thing. Look at that. That's the same chart. What happened to the alts? So it looks like the alts were crushed. And it's not really reflected in Bitcoin's price. So this is going to be something interesting to analyze. I don't know the answer yet. Technically, though, this is buying a falling knife. It's a fantastic bounce. What does it look like on USDT? It's at 119. Now, Litecoin was stuck at 100 bucks for the longest time. So, look at this Butex breakout on US, in USDT. Um, what's the difference between technical breakouts in USDT and tra uh, breakouts in Bitcoin? Well, this chart seems to be more valid. Um, Looking at the Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin chart, I didn't see anything that would uh, indicate a super buy. But this breakout here through 104 was the textbook buy signal in USDT. What does that mean? Uh, maybe it's starting to trade on its own against the dollar. It doesn't care what Bitcoin's doing. It's trading on its own. People are watching it, quoted in USDT, trading it, quoted in USDT. Remember, it's people that cause these patterns. Psychological uh, makeup of other traders and investors causes these pendants to exist, causes these crashes. How come you can tell when you're looking at a market right side up versus a chart upside down? Take any price chart. Take the Bitcoin price chart. Take the price chart of any cryptocurrency. Take the price chart of any market. Why is it that if you flip this picture upside down, I could immediately tell you, no, that's you got the pictures upside down. Why are the sell-offs sharper than the rises? Because psychology, human psychology, the way people think and act, that's why. So back to Litecoin, eh, it's a falling knife, missed the boat, going to pass. Um, so already went through my coins again. So I'm going to be, I'm going to cut this one short because it's going to take another 40 minutes just for me to do what I need to do. 
and until I get a new computer and a new mic and, and can start to process on uh, lower uh, power and lower size, I, I have to cut these short, shorter than I would. Uh, probably, like I said, I may have to convert to a Twitch stream to do this. Maybe better. Look at this. Flow is perking up here. Flow is absolutely crushed and destroyed. I was waiting for it to be crushed and destroyed. I told you I would accumulate more. I haven't accumulated any flow yet. Look at that. And to think that I was dumping it up here. I think I dabbled in it. Let's take a look. It's probably still here. Uh, let's go back to the spring. There it is. Here's some cells. Look. I sold a half a Bitcoin at 4050. Sold a thousand at 4198. I sold it 42. I sold at 4940. Oh wait, that's a buy. Hold on. I was buying the I was playing the bull market. Where's my highest sell? Yeah, it looks like I got stuck buying the top here. A, a tiny amount here. Then dumped out. But yeah, there's a big one. So I sold like 13,000. There's where I sold 0.9 Bitcoin at 4100. So there, I sold uh, 1.99 Bitcoin worth of Florin coin at 4197. Be interesting to do an analysis. So that was back in here somewhere. Be interesting to do an analysis of the price appreciation of Bitcoin versus this and whether uh, I should have just stayed in Bitcoin. It's It's hard to say. Where I trade this, that's too thin. Look at that. It's only got 23 Bitcoin volume. Look at the bid stack. 3.8 Bitcoin bid. This can go to zero. No, I'm not gonna trade that. So the rest of my day is gonna be made of made up of going through these coins. Uh, I will start with the Bitcoin quoted ones. I will look at the ones that have the highest percentage change. That's always the first thing I, I look at. Percentage change. Who's starting to move? Then I look at the chart. Does it look right? Then I buy or sell based on that. I will check the USDT prices. USDT prices are fantastic because you're going straight to dollars when you get out. What if you're worried about the price of Bitcoin underneath you? Like I said in the other video, I think. Um, you have to convert twice. You have to convert out of the coin into Bitcoin, then you have to convert out of the Bitcoin. You get bid, bid ask spread, you know, chewed up twice. If you try to move fast, you get especially chewed up. Uh, so quoted against USDT, I am more fond of these markets than the others. But I will, the rest of my morning will be spent looking for opportunities of what to buy and sell. So hopefully they give you more information. I'm going to try to do more trading videos. Going to try to do like some kind of Twitch type live stream. Got to figure out how to get the low noise PC uh, and get up streaming gear. Uh, when you're as old as I am, it's hard to keep up with the new technology. But uh, that's what I'm planning on. Twitch, a, a stream would be better for this type of format. But I'll go ahead and keep doing trading videos. I know people are interested in them. Again, I'm still catching up. Bear with me. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.